So welcome tonight uh, to um, Craft in the Kingdom, where we're looking at the intersection of our vocation and the kingdom of God and how uh, our calling and what we do um, the other six days of the week really does matter for the kingdom. So we have a very uh, dynamic couple with us tonight. Uh, and why are you looking at me that way? Do you not feel that way? Okay. Very dynamic couple. Who, we're going to get like a two-parter, okay? This is a two, two birds with one stone kind of night, okay? And, and they partner in life and all things together. Brandon and Caitlin Brooks, uh, really grateful that they're part of the life of our congregation. So really unique stuff. Brandon has a new business. How long have you been doing this now, Brandon? A year yet? Yes, but... Organizing for a year, okay? So he has a business called the Garage Organizers where they help people bring order to their life. And anybody here stressed out by a portion of your life that's just in disarray and order? I used to have a garage that every time I went through it, my blood pressure, it, I, I could just feel, just thinking about it, sweat's already getting on the my forehead. Do you, do you feel that way around any of your mess as well? Brandon's business really exists to bring ease to that, and he's going to share a little bit of what they do, and he has creative ways of making an impact for the kingdom. Really grateful for that. And then Caitlin is going to share about her pottery business that she has. Uh, we anticipated in August being able to take communion out of some chalices that she made for us uh, because of... of COVID stuff, and we had a lot of people sick, we decided to just stick with our, our other uh, communion sets. But soon, yes, very soon, you will see some of, some of Caitlin's work. Just does some great stuff. She's going to be sharing about how that business overlaps with the kingdom. And as a church, we'll be able to, to see directly how what she does in her, interacts with the kingdom. But if you would just welcome them. Brandon's going to go first, and let's welcome them tonight. Thank you. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Brandon Brooks, and our biz my business is the Garage Organizers. And uh, uh, do we have the thing up there yet? Yeah. Okay, so uh, when Adam first contacted me uh, several months ago, I was getting ready to open my store, and he told me about this. And uh, I sell all day, uh, nonstop. I get calls all day. And in my business, uh, we have a storefront, and we have people coming in, and I'm selling. And uh, when he first talked to me, I, 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 the idea of coming in and talking about my business uh, made me a little uneasy. Um, and that's the reason why I didn't bring any business cards. Someone already asked for a business card. I, networking in church makes me a little twitchy. Um, but uh, so he, he, he told me that there are some people that, that really uh, they need some help. And we see that every day, and uh, I'm going to walk you through some of those uh, um, stories. And uh, so I'm going to walk through. He gave us four questions, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the business. And at the end, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask, and I'll go over those. Um, but uh, in, our, in his initial email to me, Adam gave me, I think it was a quote, uh, about vocation. Vocation is the divine calling to be a Christian in every mode of life public as well as private, religious as well as secular, adult as well as juvenile, corporate as well as individual. And I uh, wanted to put that up there just so you can keep that in mind as I go through uh, these slides. Uh, if you can go ahead and go to the next one. So the garage organizers. Uh, so I, I've been buying and selling uh, for, for many, many years uh, since uh, the age of eight. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit more in just a second, but that is a big portion of the garage organizing. Uh, so last, last year around July, my mother-in-law sitting up here, she had an operation going on in her garage and it was time. And I believe Ted was out of town and it was an opportune time to, to tackle this project. Um, and so they had all kinds of things going on and, and uh, Caitlin's younger sister, uh, Samantha was spearheading this project and I arrived. I didn't know there was a garage organization happening, and I saw it looked very exciting. Everyone was thrilled to be there doing it. 
And so I said, you know what, let's, let's take, take action on this. So I think it was like 95 degrees out, and we were working. We had a big old tra trailer full of trash, and uh, I think uh, I was put on the duty of carrying cement, uh, cement hardened bags all, all the way up the driveway onto the trailer, and then we delivered those uh, to the dump, and we were there after dark, still working in the garage, and it was a successful mission, a very successful mission. Uh, I think Ted has since stack some things up in there, maybe uh, as an act of uh, defiance, I, I don't know. Uh, they've got chickens and all, all kinds of things in there. I, uh, maybe I should come back again, that would be great if I could come and tackle it again. Um, but uh, so after that, I talked to Samantha and I said, look, Samantha, I would love it if we could go in, get this, 50-50 on a garage organization business. And at the time, I mean, she's, she's an interior designer from Purdue University, and uh, I, I thought it was going to be a hard sell. And it was, because she said, I don't think that's going to work. Uh, but uh, so that very next week, I went into a coffee shop, and I said, I'm going to put together a website. I'm just sitting there. I prayed about it a little bit, and I thought, you know what? I think people need this. And I also think people would pay pretty good money for it too, uh, in the right circumstances. Um, so I put together a website and threw up a quick Google ad with the before and after of the garage. And I, I, I made sure to cut Trisha's thumbs up pi picture. She, it was a rough day for her. I made sure to cut her out of that before and after. Um, and I put it on Facebook, put some uh, backing about $100 for a week uh, to see what would happen and bada bing bada bang. Uh, we had about uh, 170 likes and uh, about 40 messages uh, for people wanting their garages organized. And um, I thought, okay, maybe, uh, maybe I can take action on this. And so I scheduled some consultations. And boy, I walked in there with full confidence that I was gonna, I was gonna tackle it. And I could tell you, even to today, we've had 300 plus jobs since July of last year. And that first one was the hardest. I made some big mistakes. Um, and uh, what I quoted for about 10 hours of work, I, sometimes my confidence runs a little, little wild. Uh, I quoted for about eight to 10 hours. And I'm by myself, I, have, I don't have any employees or anything. And uh, I had to spend about 47 hours total on this lady. Um, she has six antique booths, and so not only was I taking the, the worst of the worst stuff in there that she wanted me to sell for a very high premium, but I had to sort the items that she would be distributing to her antique booths in the winter, and she was a, she was a tough boss. Uh, she had me working, and when I showed up there that first time, I can tell you, her and her friend were there, and they were looking at me with both garage doors up, stuff stacked floor to ceiling she had to come out her front door it was a three-car garage she had to come out her front door to show me and she was sitting there arms crossed like show me <laughs> show me and usually for these garage organizations the first two hours are uh filled with skepticism uh doubts from the client in every way shape or form and sometimes it gets to me it hits me hard um, i get a little worried sometimes that with all their stuff out on the, on the driveway and uh, they're taking 20 minutes to pick through each box, I start to see sunset. And I think this is as bad as it could, it's gonna get. Uh, I mean, it could be bad and they're gonna be mad. Uh, but so I learned after that first one and I put out an ad and I got someone uh, to, to come and start helping me uh, out of Indianapolis. I thought the north side of Indianapolis would be perfect for garage organization. And uh, it was about a two and a half hour drive and I got to deal with uh, 69. And for the majority of that last year, uh, we had to divert through Martinsville. So two and a half hours up there and then do a 10 hour job and then two and a half hours back. Um, taxing, very taxing. And uh, so we got this employee and we started uh, just three to five garage organizations per week, just right out of the gate. And we were learning all kinds of things, changing up the way we had carts coming in and at the time, I, I was telling people, hey, we're gonna have um, a monthly garage sale event. And at the time, my warehouse, I went to them and I said, hey, I've already got the warehouse and I'd love to do a garage sale out of here. And turns out, that's a strict rule. No garage sales out of the warehouse. And so, okay, 
So I went to a flea market. I rented several booths, and there was no way of really keeping track of inventory. And so uh, that was tough, so we had to do instant buyouts from people. And uh, that was a little chaotic. Uh, but we started, we started trucking and we were solving problems and doing a lot of praying and we had a lot of situations. One time a 26 foot truck, Lily left, she, my assistant, she left and she was supposed to pick up another 26 foot truck. She returned, she took a detour off the gravel path and got stuck in the grass. Um, and she went all the way down to the frame uh, trying to get out. And so after two hours, I finally hear back from her and uh, we were in a major circumstance. Uh, I thought, my goodness, God. I, I remember I told her to go back to the organization and to, to continue sorting and I, there's no end in sight. And I prayed, I prayed to God, please let us get this figured out. We called you all uh, roadside assistance and uh, they, uh, they quoted us almost $600 to come out and get that tow towed. And so a whole day of work, shot all profit gone uh so i thought okay i'm gonna go ahead and call another person and they got it done for 170 we completed the job it was spectacular next slide there it is okay so they had a shed completely jam-packed full i don't have a picture of that but here's their garage on the bottom and then we built them a shelf and built them uh and got them containers we sorted all their tools and uh, they ended up making about $900 from their portion of the commission, from stuff from their shed and uh, from stuff in their garage. They were thrilled with the, with the job that we did, even though it was very difficult. Um, and so onto my services, uh, go on, there, there's one more. Uh, so there's another client, uh, garage opens and it is just a wall. Her husband uh, cannot walk and uh, uh, they came out there and they were having some, some, uh, some debates about what was gonna go, what was gonna stay, and so she would get rid of things while he was inside and then he would come out and then he would sell, tell us after we'd loaded stuff in the truck that, you know, that stuff, that's, that's not gonna happen. So we're telling people, hey, we gotta make some decisions here, uh, and, and we ended up locking it in. Uh, it took us about 14 hours. I got home at like 11.30 at night and we, we conquered it, uh, we got it done, we got all the tools uh, arranged, and so far they've made about $700 uh, on their portion of the, of the consignment, and it's nearly almost paid off their entire garage organization. Uh, go on to the next one. And so as we kept doing garage organizations, uh, we moved uh, to uh, a monthly fairgrounds event, and so we would do heavy advertising in Noblesville, and we would, we would do just a monthly Friday and Saturday event. The first one was reasonable, did really reasonably well, and the second one the next month did really great. Um, and I thought, okay, the best way to do this, I need to open a store and I gotta spend, uh, I gotta spend some more time closer to home. And so I opened up the store uh, to great risk, and there's a picture of our store. Uh, it really could use an organization in that photo. Uh, <laughs> we're working on it. Uh, so we're, we're, we're changing things around, we're constantly moving things around, but uh, so I wanted to go ahead and start walking through the different segments uh, of the business. So we do garage organization, we also offer consignment pickups, so uh, oftentimes we'll get someone uh, that maybe is widowed or has had some, some rough times in life, uh, they, they can't af afford an organization job, and so we started offering consignment pickups, and that's $65 for uh, two of our guys in a box truck and one hour. And they'll walk around, well, they'll walk around the, uh, their house and they'll point out heavy things, things that have literally been in their house. One, one lady, she's been there for 65 years, moving into an assisted living, all of her family has passed away. And we came and we got everything for her and we got it all taken care of. And uh, uh, so that's the consignment pickup. She just walked around and, and pointed to things and we got it out of there for her and got it moved to another location. We don't charge a monthly storage fee. Uh, we uh, then just charge a, a percentage of commission, 50-50 for uh, items under $30 and it's 70-30 for items over 30. Um, and so uh, we do storage unit cleanouts. We had a client uh, that um, had a storage unit, uh, two storage units, two 10 by 20 storage units that 
uh, they had had for three and a half years and they could not lift the items inside and the moving company was going to charge them close to $3,000 to move them to another location that she didn't have. Uh, we came in and we knocked it out in an hour and a half. Uh, it's a big goal in our business to, to, to try and, and give people the opportunity uh, to get something done and kind of get out from underneath uh, maybe what could be piling on debt. Um, but uh, so we do storage unit cleanouts, we do consignment pickups, we do just trash pickups. And in some cases, we've someone's moving to another part of the state and we will pack up all their items, organize the items into packing boxes. We'll actually complete the move for them. And then when we arrive, we'll unpack it and then we'll organize it in their house and then we'll sell the items they don't want and take the trash to the dump. It's an all in one package. Um, but those items then go to our store and we, we just got another warehouse where we stage photos for furniture. And so uh, God has really blessed us with uh, a, a good setup and um, uh, it's working out pretty well so far. Uh, could we go ahead and move on to the next one? So our client dashboard, uh, so our clients can trash the, track their sales. Uh, so they get a full list of every item that they've consigned with us. And when an item sells through our POS system, uh, I've set it up to where it'll automatically put what they've sold and how much it sold for minus our commissions onto their sales dashboard. So it's just a link and so anyone can track it. Uh, and on, I'm just about done with the sales pitch right now. It's making me twitchy, sales pitch. But okay, so the next one. There's me. Uh, when I was eight years old, um, I, uh, when I was eight years old, uh, I had alphabetically organized books in my room. I had index cards with every single drawer completely organized. And on my bed there, you can see I've got all my things that I am categorizing and a trash can there. And that was the beginning of organizing. And uh, it was at that time that I, I realized, you know, God has, has, has instilled in me something of organizing. And, and I can tell you, my sister's, her room uh, was not quite so spectacular. And I took pride in mine being the, the most organized in the house. Um, and so, uh, so I went over to a friend's house uh, and in sixth grade and his mom tasked us. He said, Brandon, you can spend the night if you organize, if you guys organize your room. And I said, absolutely, I'm ready for action on that. And uh, so we tackled it, took us all night, we didn't sleep. We had a reading nook for him, a, a little office desk set up. His mom cried when she came in the next day. And so those are at the very beginning uh, of the organizing stages. I've always loved organizing. There's something about just seeing instantaneous, instantaneous results from work. And, um, and so, I started buying and selling also uh, with my grandpa and summers. We would go uh, garage selling Fridays and Saturdays and we would find all kinds of deals, all kinds of deals. And so I had a little mo lawn mowing business. I had like six yards. And so I would use that money from the yards and I would spend it on garage sale deals Friday and Saturday. And we would take those items to the Brookville flea market on Wednesday mornings. We'd get up at 430. Me and my grandpa would head down there and we would uh, we would sell we would sell baby and we would set up things and we would be wheeling dealing and we would empty every single item out of our our truck and we'd get some mcdonald's and it was just a spectacular thing with a wad of cash oh, oh buying and selling i love buying and selling uh so and so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna try not to go too long sometimes i spiral out of control i'll end up taking up all of caitlin's time i'm gonna try not to take up your time uh, so I'm going to blow through here. Uh, so I'm going to just walk you through my lead up to get to garage organizing right before Trisha's. And I could tell you that it has been a long path of many failed businesses, <laughs> a long path, thousands, tens of thousands lost, lost. Um, but in, in college, uh, my friends and I would, we would go and, uh, what we called a deal trip. We would line up 
15 Craigslist deals in, in uh, Cincinnati and Indianapolis and we'd hit 17 Goodwills and we'd get back and we'd have a giant pile in our apartment and we would have an eBay listing party. List it all. I bought 70 Vera Bradley purses from a flea market and so I walked into the IWU uh, mailing center and I bogged that place down with shipping. I bogged it down. Um, and then we started a wireless headphone company. It failed spectacularly. Years of work. Uh, we thought we were going to be on shelves in seven months and uh, after three years, it uh, didn't work. And some of the guys from our crew actually believe that uh, our charging case that we developed at Rose Holman, uh, uh, Apple stole our patent for the charging case, even to this day, but I, I don't think so. Uh, so we started that, and then I got out of college. I, I started a cell phone store uh, in downtown Bloomington, and I even once started a consign, it's called consignedcenter.com. I tried this, I tried this business called Consign Center without the helping people. Get Brandon in your garage. Get Brandon in your garage and I'll pick for your stuff and I'll pay you. Nobody, nobody, nothing. And uh, not a single person. And uh, so, I mean, that, that dragged on. And at that time I had Everly, my oldest, uh, in the office with me. Uh, it was exciting times. Caitlin was still uh, uh, art teacher. And, uh, uh, at one point, I got a $150,000 loan from the SBA, and I thought, this is the big leagues. I thought I had made it, and I lost every penny, every single penny. And I can tell you it was during those times that uh, God really pulled me through. Um, but I've had many failed businesses, and Caitlin has been a real trooper uh, dealing with me. <laughs> I've got ideas galore. and. Uh, with every business, I thought this is the one. This is the one that's gonna that's gonna propel me into a billion dollar status. I think I told Jane Thompson when I first w hit the scene when I was courting Caitlin that uh, I'd have a net worth of a hundred million by the time I'm thirty. I'm thirty. <laughs> I don't have a net worth of a hundred million. Um, and so all, through all these businesses, um, let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So you don't have to look at that anymore. What does your vocation teach you about the nature of God? God is so good. Uh, I can tell you uh, at 3 a.m. when, I'm sorry, at 3 a.m. when the night is darkest and you, you wake up and you got a cold sweat and you just can't, you don't think you can take it. The kids are sleeping. The mortgage is behind. Uh, and maybe it's time to just call it quits. God's voice is as sweet as can be at, uh, at 3 a.m. There, there in the night, you just listen to God's voice and you can, right off, the, right off the bat, you can hear, you can hear his voice just clear as day. I didn't think I would cry on this. But what I've learned from this vocation and buying and selling is that uh, God is good. Uh, every single business, I thought this is the one, and uh, it wasn't. And I think this might be the one, and I pray daily, please let this be the one. Uh, and I'm, I'm prepared for him to, to say no, but... Okay. God is good. Uh, let's go to the next slide. What does your vocation teach you about being made in the image of God? Uh, so everyone is created in the image of God, full of dignity, with unique talents and gifts to use for the glory of God. Um, so our value is, is connected to our creator. Uh, which gives us an inestimable worth. Um, and people that, that use their vocations uh, in times like I'm, I was in, just someone taking you to lunch after church because you got $10 in a bank account, 
or your father-in-law repairing your car for free, or even putting my dad. Uh, he has a way of really breaking me down. Uh, it looks like it's pretty easy, but usually it's, it's a little more difficult than this. Uh, he has a way of talking me through things and continuing to have faith in me. Uh, Ken Thompson, back there, I can tell you, I, I gave a, a pep talk to my, I gave a pep talk to my employees. Uh, right now we have seven. Uh, with Ken Thompson as the, the uh, background, the foundation of that pep talk, and I was talking about possibly doing free organizations and just to get product and to help people, and uh, they were pretty against that. And I can tell you, here's a couple of, of things. Ken Thompson, we lived with them briefly while we, after we purchased our house uh, while it was being renovated. And while I was there, I looked out 96 degrees and Ken Thompson was out there scraping paint off of their deck with the biggest smile that you have ever seen. And it looked like absolute torture, but he was fired up to be scraping that paint off of there. Um, and another time, I'm driving around Bedford, uh, I saw him, he's got his work truck, and uh, guaranteed he was jumping from person to person figuring out how he was gonna use his unique skill set uh, and, and uh, uni his unique skill set to, to help people with their deck or a leak or their air conditioning or, or he's got so many talents. <laughs> he can do it all. Um, but using your vocation uh, to help others, uh, there are so many ways that it can be done. And I, I pray every day that uh, God can, and can use me uh, in the same way that he uses Ken or my father-in-law, Ted. Uh, or my, my dad or uh, any of these people. Um, I go on to the next one. What does your vocation teach you about the community you serve? Um, people are struggling. Uh, so at one point in 2020, I, uh, man, I wish I could stop crying, my goodness. Um, in 2020, uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, my business at the time was reselling shoes from Goodwill. All the Goodwills closed. Uh, so I went to Grubhub. Grubhub, it was actually pretty spectacular at the time, and it was a blessing from God. But I can't tell you, in my 97 Espresso with no air conditioning, uh, driving around all day, it felt pretty hopeless. Um, all day long, and you just tilt your head back and you think, this construction, this light is not programmed correctly to let me through. Uh, everything, construction everywhere, and it just feels like you, your mortgage is coming and you got a foreclosure notice and you just don't know what's going to happen. I can tell you that uh, just as it was in 2020, it's, it's pretty bad now. I, I interact with people on a daily basis and I would say one in five of my clients uh, cries either during consultation or during the uh, garage organization. And the biggest thing that we run into is uh, these individuals are scared to death of anybody looking at their space. They don't want anybody. I, I do the gar garage organizing. I go into people's houses and they know it. I do it professionally. And they're scared. They're scared to let even me through. And sometimes there's been people contact me that say, I, I really need you to come, uh, but uh, I just, I, I can't have you in my house. I'm too embarrassed. And I say, well, why did you contact me? Uh, but I tried my best. And so we started doing consignment pickups for free with no initial cost up front. Uh, it, because people like that, if they do let us in, they're usually on a, a lower budget. And so we'll get their items. And what they really need is a space they want to play with their grandkids. And their entire house has just been completely hoarded up, piled up. Can't even walk to the door. There, We found dead possums. We found... Uh, dead squirrels. We found mice. Uh, there was one that jumped across my shirt when I was walking through one time. Um, but these people are in real need. Ooh, I've only got five minutes left. Okay, I'm working. Okay, I'm going. Um, there are people that are in real need, and, and it's rich and poor. Uh, we had a lady in Greenwood, huge 9,000 square foot house, 
and fountain out front, garage, high as, felt like as high as this ceiling. And she's a longer burger hoarder. And she has on her couches, on her bed, on her dining table, on in her foyer, up her stairs, she's probably got 200,000 longer burger baskets. And her husband had threatened her with pulling out nine uh, dumpsters and throwing them in there. And the day that she had me in there for a consultation, she had purchased another lot for $10,000 in Ohio. And she had stacked it in the foyer. Her kids were not visiting her because they just disagreed with what she was doing. And uh, I sat down with them for three hours and I broke down exactly how I would bring, I would get a warehouse much bigger than what I had and I would inventory all of them and that we would liquidate them and we could clear their house out by Christmas. This is what her, her husband wanted. And they were good to go and I had my, my team scheduled to come and pick it up. And she called me that day and said, I can't do it. And I haven't heard from her since. I call it the white whale uh, because I would love to sell those longer burger baskets. Uh, it's one day she may contact me. <laughs> um, but uh, so rich and poor, there are people, there are people everywhere that really truly need help. We did a pole barn organization for, for a woman. Her family did not want to have anything, anything at all to do with helping her do it because she's, she's a, a hoarder. And we came out and we completed her project and she was thrilled with the result. Um, but if there are any people that uh, on YouTube that eventually see this, uh, I can tell you that, that you are not alone in any way, shape or form. Uh, even my garage, I, it needs another organization. Uh, the, the garage is the, the warehouse of the house. Uh, if you're cleaning something else, you put it in the garage. Um, but the last one, we're gonna polish it off here. What have you learned about the kingdom of God through your vocation? So the verse, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Um, he, has, he has called us as Christians to be witnesses, witnesses of Jesus and to expand the kingdom of God across the earth. And on my website, I put, it's a Christian run company. And um, that's in one little sentence on, on the about us page. And I can tell you that all of my experiences with clients don't always go well, uh, don't always go spectacular, but I have labeled myself as a Christian. And once you put that out there, once you put that very, very important word out there and you associate yourself with that word as a Christian. And there's, there's people that call themselves Christians and people that are not Christians see that and what they do in public. It goes back to the, the vocation in private and in public. And, and they see these individuals uh, doing what they shouldn't be doing. That what they thought was a Christian is not what they're doing. Um, but I put that on there and I was worried that maybe I wouldn't be able to hold up to that. What if I can't pay a client their consignment fees? What if the store goes under and someone can't get, get something done? We had a, an individual that she paid a deposit on an organization and then she had the garage organization done. We got a picture of her with her thumbs up and she paid the other half of her deposit with two debit cards. And uh, she didn't use all of her containers and one shelving unit. And so we were due a refund for her. So we issued the refund for her on her Discover card. And it was for $148. And she claimed she didn't get it. She didn't get it. And I know I sent it. And she told me over the phone, she told me over the phone that she doesn't have a Discover card. And I told her, unless someone came in and paid the other half of her deposit for her, that that, um, uh, that had to be her card because they paid her deposit. And, and, and um, she was very angry. 
with that insinuation. Uh, it, it's nearly impossible, really, for, for that to not be her card. Uh, but I, I walked away from that experience, and, and we have experiences like that. I've got a few more I can give you here in just a second. Um, where even if, and then I ended up just giving her another $148 refund on her other card. So we were down $290 because I didn't want her to think what, it, it, naturally when people see our website, and it happens all the time, it, if something goes wrong at all, the first thing they do is they go and they say, I thought this was a Christian run organization. Anything, anything. Um, we had an individual that was scheduled for one o'clock and we were all the way across Indianapolis and one job took particularly long and we were helping an elderly individual and she was taking a while and we were 30 minutes late to a guy's job. He called and cussed me out because we were late even though we called him and he demanded he wanted a refund and he wanted the job done. I did it. I gave it to him and we completed his job. And I, I wonder with these experiences and, and people online uh, coming on, and it, you can see it, some of you may have been bombarded with our Facebook ads at some point. <laughs> Hope not, not a bombardment. Uh, there are some people out there that live to attack people on Facebook. Um, we had someone the other day that just commented on all of our Facebook posts, trash, <laughs> poop. <laughs> what? What are you guys doing that I can't do? Or uh, what was the other thing? Uh, he, he was texting, uh, commenting back on all the people that have commented to us, one in their job, and saying, you are lazy, fat people. Cannot do your own work. Get off your butt and do some work. Why do you need these people? All kinds of times. And then another circumstance, even just today, I thought about taking a picture of the screenshot and I decided not to because I didn't want to get carried away with screenshots. A lady I was going back and forth with, uh, she, she sent us a message and we were scheduling a consultation and she sent me all the photos of her garage and it's not the worst I've seen, but it's pretty full. It's over in Nashville. And after all the photos, she said, what time works for you? Because I was asking what, what time next week works. And she said, pig, P-I-G. I'm like, I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. So I didn't say anything. And then she said, pig, question mark, question mark, question mark. And I said, I'm not sure I understand. So I text her that. She butt dialed pig and sent it to me and thought I sent it about her garage. <laughs> and I could tell you, it took her about 45 minutes after the pig before she responded back to me. <laughs> if she had never contacted me again, she would have thought I called her a pig for having an unorganized garage. So all of these, she finally contacted me back. We've got the, she said, I, I was hoping you were a legitimate company. I was telling people about you. I, I was hoping you were not that mean. <laughs> uh, but with all these circumstances, um, Christian is on there Christian is on there and it is representing us. Or, or, or we are representing Christ. Think about that. Um, what does every experience in business, what does every interaction with the people that we, we have interactions with, what does that say about Jesus? I think about it all the time. One little disagreement, one misunderstanding, one person that... that bought an item and leave it, leaves us a negative review because it didn't work and it turns out they had, we have a 30 day return policy in our store and he's never returning and he's told all of his friends how terrible we are. Um, I can't argue that. I'm not going to argue with someone. I'm representing Jesus. I, I, I am, I'm going to come in and I am going to, and sometimes I get fired up, but I try to stay calm because I'm representing Jesus. Um, but I can see my time is, is really coming to an end. Uh, we can do a, a two or three minutes of maybe if you guys have any questions. TheGarageOrganizers.com
other questions? Okay. I appreciate you letting me come up. And uh, I can tell you the grand finale is yet to come. Look up ahead. She's got a powder wheel. She is ready for action. My wife, Caitlin. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon. If you guys want to pass the microphone on to Caitlin.